Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the channel and we're back for another Caddy episode at Auto Shack. Don't panic, we are on daily videos at the moment. So catch up on progress yesterday and then watch this one as well and maybe we'll even get another video out tomorrow. So in the last episode, you just saw the engine was fully re-sprayed up and looking amazing. It looks like a work of art. It looks more like a sculpture than an actual working piece. So in this episode, we've got to get it Mark 1 ready. We've got some mods to do with a shallow sump, and then we'll get it all ready to go back in the car. So let's carry on where we left off. So as you can see, we resprayed it all, gloss black, everything to match the powder coating in the engine bay. We've got the block, we've got the shallow sump on, and it is all looking amazing. So we've got all our new parts to go on as well. So let's start with the mods we need to do. Let's get the top all sealed up. Get a new gasket in there. Just give these a little lube up because it has been sitting for quite a while when we're turning it over. Nice. And then just a little bit of sealer in the corners where the gasket meets. That's where it might not quite get in the corner. And the new gasket. See? And spark plug gasket. On we go. So I've popped the old water pump out and the new one is actually a metal upgrade as opposed to the plastic factory one which can break up. And new thermostat too, so we'll get that cover on. On. So next up is the cam belt kit. We need to get this Mark I converted. So we bought a complete gates kit, which of course included the belt, all the tensioners, and the water pump. So we've got the water pump on, but we can only use the belt. As we saw earlier, we can't fit the automatic tensioner because this is the old one that came off the engine. That sits there on these bolt holes but we need our engine mount to go there on these three bolts, like so. So the tensioner can't bolt in. So you use a Mark II one and put the tensioner here, but you need a little spacer so it lines up with the belt. And we have got that here. We've got this from Retrofication as well. This is a little spacer that just goes on there. Traditionally, you just use a load of washers, but this is much nicer. That sits on there. That goes on there. And because it's recessed, sits on there so it can't fall out. So we need to put our extended stud because we've got those washers on, wind that in there. And we can put our spacer on and a Mark II Golf tensioner. And then the belt can then miss out the engine mount. Just cleaning out the thread, make sure it's clean all the way down. Because remember on the old engine that we took out, the reason for failure was the cam belt tensioner bolt had sheared off. So they'd cross threaded it and then it weakened it, snapped off. And that was the terminal of this engine. And a bit of Loctite on there should go in. A bit of double nut action. Spacer on and tensioner on. And then put the belt on. I've just checked it's at top dead center by putting that down on top of the piston and putting it up and down. We've got our mark perfect there. Got our tensioner on. So we'll just bring this up under tension. And you want about a 90 degree turn on there. That's good. We'll knit that up and give it a couple of rotations. We've got these two little lines that are lined up with here and here. And then we've got our top one as well. So I can put the cover on and just check our little mark on the balancer. And if that's right, we can torque this one. And that's the belt on. Balancer on. So we've got our mark and a mark spot on. And we've got our cam pulley lined up perfectly with the notch in the cover. We are all timed up. So we can torque this up now. Done. Just give that a little mark. Let's get this bottom pulley off and get that painted up so that matches. 
but timing is done. Next up, let's get this exhaust manifold all back on. Got the faces cleaned up, cleaned up the face of here as well, and the turbo inlet. What we did find is there was a broken gasket on this, so it's good we did take it all off, because that was blowing out of the back that we couldn't see. So let's get all this bolted on. All right, I've got lots more bits bolted on, and it is looking pretty nice. On the front here, we've got the thermostat, we've got the alternator bracket, we've got the water pipe, knock sensors, got the new genuine oil filter, and I pre-filled that up with oil. Got all the belt on, got the manifold all on and torqued up on the back. And I've just tried the turbo back on because we've got a few little mods to make. Like I said earlier, for some reason, this oil return is too low. Where it's mounted here, it's down where the old sump used to be, down here but we want it to line up with that flange there. But if you look at it, everything is nice and parallel that way. So if we take a chunk out of here, that'll move this exactly up in line with the hole. So that's what I'm gonna do, shorten this. I did try bending it up, but then this kinks this up, which not ideal for a turbo oil drain. That's not what you want. So I think we'll just chop that through there, shorten that, and that'll be a job good. The other thing I noticed when I was putting it together, is the stud sticking out of the tensioner is very long for some reason. I tried turning it around, but then the shoulder sticks out, so the nut can't do up tight. But I wasn't sure whether it's gonna clear or not. But now we've got our covers on and our pulley. You can see it sticks out past the cover line. So we've got the cam belt cover that goes on the top, and that's got to sit flush with the other black cover, which is not gonna because it hits on that bolt. So I'm gonna trim that down as well. We'll take it down to in line with the end of the nut, and then that will then clear in line with the cover. We can get that on. And we've also got to cut this water pipe so we can get our fit in. This is the one that used to come round to the header tank. So we're gonna chop this one off here, put our little fitting on, and that's where we've got that new hose to return back to the header tank, that side. So let's get on with these few mods. So the distance between holes is 35 millimetres. So in theory, if we take 35 out of here, that should move this up. So that is our measurement. Let's see if this will work as a marker. If we can wrap that round, that'll be a 35 millimetre band. So then that leaves us the right measurement. And on, so we'll cut there. Right, let's test the theory. Well, I'd say that is pretty bang on the money. With that bolted together, with the mount there, bolted there, that joins up nicely. So that's what we needed. So I'll weld that back together. Try it back on. Check. on there. All right, let's move on to this long stud and take off the excess. I've just made a little waterfall there so no filings fall into anywhere they shouldn't. So let's snip this off. And off. And chopped off flush. I did it with a handsaw because I didn't want to heat it up too much and disturb the nylock. But the nylock has still got its thread. Now that should clear nicely. You can see it doesn't stick out past the cover. And this cover has got a little bulge in it. That's where the bolt sits there. So it has got some clearance on the inside. And they sit on there. So it's all sitting, slotted in nicely. And we're not touching the bolt. It can push in against it. So remember we had to chop the cover around the engine mount but we were left with a hole here where the TT one was. So this is the original, so it's got a big cutout and we we're left with a hole. But we found on another 1.8 turbo, they don't have that hole. So where the engine mount goes through, they must mount differently. So we use that cover. So now we are all covered up on the cambo end. And I've just got the oil return back on. That's looking good, blending in. And you wouldn't even know it had been modified. So we are going to take the turbo back off 
because what we found when removing it, the gasket between the two was actually split. And you can see just there, there was a little bit of a blow from the turbo. So we haven't got a gasket yet, so I'm just gonna whip this back off and that will make it easier getting it back in the car because obviously we then lose all this, which is where the steering rack is. So it'll make it easier to slide back in. And they're easy enough to put in in the car because they bolt straight from the top here. So I'll whip this back off. Progress is going well. So one last thing that we've got to do to make this from TT to Mark 1 ready is the oil pressure switch. On the TT, they just have a single switch like most cars, which is normally closed. And then when it gets pressure, it opens the circuit and turns the light out, which is what the TT is. On the Mark 1s, for some reason, they put two oil pressure switches, one down here by the pump and one up here on the side of the head. One was a low pressure and one was a high pressure. So the dash needs to see the oil pressure reach the low pressure and then reach the high pressure. And if these two sensors aren't connected, it buzzes on the dash and flashes the oil pressure light. It's quite a pain on engine conversions because there's no real way of getting around it. So what we do is we put both pressure sensors into the oil housing because there's no port on the end of the head here. Luckily, there's a little blank on the 1.8 turbos. So we'll take the factory one out and we'll put the other one next to it here. So then we can connect the dash up so it'll see pressure at both switches and then turn the light off. So on the diesel engine that came out, you can see we've got the oil filter housing and then we've got one pressure switch here. Then they put the other one on the side of the head here. So we'll take this and it's important to get these wired up the same way round as well. Otherwise, again, you'll just have a whole load of buzzing on your dash. So let's get these connected to the TT engine. And I've just cleaned up the switches I got out of the old engine. And I've cleaned up the bottom face because on these, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but they actually have the part number and what pressure they are. So this is our high pressure. This is our low pressure. So this one says 0.25 bar. And this one says 0.75 to 1.0 bar which I thought the high pressure is normally 1.8, but if it makes it go out, it'll go out. But one of these is normally open and one of these is normally closed. And that's where the dash gets confused if you just put one normally closed switch in. So if we take the TT one out and on the bottom here, you can see it just is 1.6 bar. So that's when it turns the light off when it sees 1.6 bar of oil pressure. So one of these will go straight back in the TT hole, nice and easy. And also on this housing, there's a little blanking grub screw so we can take that out and use that. Here we go. So this is just a blanking for one of the oil drillings, but it's just the right size for the second oil pressure switch. So I just made a note of the part numbers in case we do need to replace them. And it's just a big whopping 24 to nip them up. Put there on there. Job done. So just before we do take the turbo off, we're just gonna do this water line. So it's the same compression fittings, just like we've done on the fuel rail and we've just done on the tank as well. They just go in, clamp together, and we can put our AN fitting on the bottom there and that will go round to the correct side. So I've got it as short as I can up to this bracket because we can't have it sticking out this side that on then we got our little compression fit in push that in and then we've got our other bit and just nip them together just nip up the compression fit in and then the water outlet from the turbo is now AN ready so obviously it's right by the manifold there and these can get glowing red hot which is where the Torx fireproof sleeve comes in. So it's like a fiberglass, heat resistant, and we can just slide that over all our AN pipes. And they'll be protected in there. Because what I'm probably gonna do, put this one sweeping around, and then I'll run the hose on that, and I'll probably just attach it to the water inlet, and then that will come underneath and through there. There's a nice little gap behind the turbo that can go. And in the heat protective sleeve, that won't be a problem. Keeps this side all clear. So let's get this turbo off, and then I think we can get it off the stand. 
So I've just bolted one of our mounting points on the back because when they're both on the front, it tends to tilt it back a bit. So it gives us a little bit more control. I'm glad we took the turbo off. Because even though you're never going to see it, the back of the engine looks just as good as the front. So let's get this down, sitting on the sump, and then we can put the clutch and flywheel on. Now we're in shiny show mode for everything. We have to be super careful picking it up, even just bolting onto things we put rubber mats between it make sure nothing's touching the rocker cover but now we can see the end we can get our clutch and flywheel so we've got this from dark side developments and it is a single mass flywheel conversion new clutch release bearing friction plate and our o2j solid flywheel with all new bolts and clean the paint off so it's all true and the flywheel is on got the bolt started we've got our handy little helper here that locks the flywheel so let's get these torqued up now 90 degrees mark them all at 12 o'clock All done. Give this a final clean up. Give that a clean up as well. Ready. And the clutch. Check. And all marked off. And of course, signed Super Ron Caddy Crew. So I think now we can go and get that new shiny gearbox. And while he'd had the gloss black out, also done the gearbox. So that's all shiny, ready to go back on as well. There'll be no dragging this along the concrete now. Everything is on soft mats. Well, like I said, rubber mounts to keep it all pristine. We've got a new clutch release bearing that came with the kit. It's a new one all on, arm back on, all greased up. So let's get this shiny masterpiece mounted to this shiny masterpiece. First try. And we are all bolted on. This is the gearbox you saw in a previous episode because we we're just using the mock-up when it was in the car. So this was sent away, had a full refresh, fully rebuilt inside, resealed, new bearings, all as good as new and then Lee has given it a full gloss black so it is as shiny as the bodywork so we have just got to drill these holes out like we did on the other one but this is looking good so let's get these mounts on and get this mark one ready and then we've got our longer bolts to go in for our rear mount we've already taken these ones out so we don't crack the paint you can see these ones are all nicely painted now so we can wind our longer ones through and then put on our rear mount. Carefully, it's better. Let's get rid of all this. And then that allows us to put our Mark I conversion mount on. The bolt's going through, the nut on this side. So that's all our mounts on. We've got our driver side one, passenger side one. They're the main ones to get it in. And then we've just got our rear one on because that's a bit awkward once it's in. So we are ready to drop it in the car or lift it up, but I'll probably call it there for today because it is nearly midnight. So I'll carry on tomorrow, bolting some more bits on. So I'm probably gonna wrap this episode up here. We are all ready to drop it in, but this is probably turning into quite a long video now. There has been a lot of hours involved into making sure everything is cleaned up, everything is prepped well, getting everything painted, every little sensor, every little wire, every little pipe cleaned up to match the perfect gloss black engine. So what I'm gonna do, as it's a bank holiday weekend, I'm gonna get the engine in in the morning and try and get the video out Sunday night. We have got everything now to get this engine in, all the mounts are on ready. We've got all the radiators, all the wiring looms done, all the covers are cut. It should just be a case of dropping it straight in. 
And also, don't forget the Caddy has now got its own merchandise line. We have got the Caddy Crew t-shirts and hoodies. So if you've been enjoying the build, you can now display it to everyone else and be part of the Caddy Crew. So there's links down in the description for that. You can get them in all different colours and sizes. I'm going to go home for a quick wash up, but I'll be back in the morning to start filming, installing the engine and getting that out for you for Sunday night. If you're only just joining the channel now, we've got a full playlist of this build all the way up to the point now. So you can have a big binge and get right up to date and be ready for Sunday's video. So it will be a first on the Super Ron channel. It's always been Friday night drops, but this week you guys will have two. So make sure you give this video a like and until next time, make sure you have fun. <laughs>